This is what a computer's memory looks like. Pretty confusing, right? Let's organize all those ones and zeros into bytes. As you can see, there's eight binary digits per one byte, and it's a little bit easier to read, but still a little bit confusing. Let's convert all of these into hexadecimal digits. Hexadecimal is a 16 digit numbering system. You got all 10 digits and then you have A, B, C, D, E, F as letters, which can also stand for digits. And it's a little bit easier to read because we have two hexadecimal characters per byte. And you'll notice that this is what a computer's memory should look like. But why do you guys care? You guys should care because today we are going to be looking at the memory of a specific game, Mario Kart DS. I know it's old, but it's an easy game to edit, guys, and I'm, today I'm going to show you how changing the game's memory will affect its behavior. So let's get right into it. So quickly before we get started, I'm going to tell you guys the tools we're going to be using to make this video possible. So the first tool is the Desmume Nintendo DS emulator. This is what we're going to be using to play the DS games on our computer and also view the game's memory so that way we can change the game's memory, all that stuff. And then lastly, we need the Nintendo DS ROM of Mario Kart DS. We need that ROM file to actually play the game through Desmune. So we're going to go ahead, open up the game, and it's going to open up in Desmune. Then I'm just going to go through the menu and select all the default settings, Grand Prix, 50cc. And then right up here, you can see tools. We have a RAM search. And that's one of the features of Desmium is that we can search the game's memory. And that's what we're gonna be using to show how we can change the behavior of this game. So the first thing we're gonna look at is how to use this tool. So you'll notice there's an address column and what this address column signifies is the location where each value is stored in the game. These could be variables such as maybe your speed, your health, your money, anything. So it's, these are the unique locations. It's a way of assigning a location to each of these values. And just think of it like the address of your house. Each house has a unique address, so that way you can easily find it. Okay, the next thing you'll notice is we have three other columns. One is the value column, and say like in a game, Grand Theft Auto San Andreas or Grand Theft Auto 5, you have a certain amount of money, that's a value in the game, and that value has a specific address in the computer's memory. And um, also the previous and changes column are to in indicate if this value has a change or if it's been changed. For example, if you're playing first-person shooter games, there's a lot of health variables. Health is very important because you might get shot at and then your health is lowered. So that's why the, the previous value indicates what that value used to be before it changed. And then the changes column is how many changes that value has had since it's been recorded. Okay, now comes the fun part. Now we want to decide what do we want the game to do? What do we want to change about the game? So I want to change what appears in the item box up there. I want to make it so I can change it to any item I want. And I know this has already been done before, but I just want to stick to the basics to prove it to you guys. So we're going to find the value for that item. We're going to find out the address for that item, and that way we can change what we want it to be. Okay, so to find our value, we need to set the comparison operator to equal to, and then we need to compare to by number of changes and type in zero, and then data size is going to be four bytes, and then data type, don't worry about what that means, but just leave it at signed. Okay, now we are going to clear the change counts, and we're going to start searching, and the reason we're going to do that is because we know that we're not getting an item in the game. The item box is still black, so we know we can search because this value isn't changing, so it's gonna limit our possibilities. Then we're gonna go ahead, go to our number of changes and set that equal to one because we are about to change something. That way we can limit our values faster. And you'll notice once we grab an item and the item box chooses the item, we hit search, 
and then our possibilities are immediately narrowed down to 185. Then we continue to use this logic of whether the item is changing or not to manipulate this program and just keep searching for the values until we narrow down our possibilities. Then once we get down to a few possibilities, we can pick the one that seems the most logical. In this case, it's going to be 19. Then we can change that value to whatever we want. In this case, 1 will give us a red shell. Even if we wanted to, we could change it to 6, which is the bomb. But after doing all this, we wonder what happens if we restart the game. Well, in some cases, the value that we just edited isn't stored by a static address. And what that means is that that address will change every time you restart the game. So we actually need to solve something here. We need to find the pointer that points to this value. A pointer is a static address, and it points to a certain address that holds the value always in the game. And that right there, to find that value, is called dereferencing the pointer. So in my next video, I'm going to cover pointers more in depth, but I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you really learned something, please let me know in the comments below, and I'll make more of these. Otherwise, if you just thought it was a waste of time, then just let me know, and I won't make more of these, but I hope you guys enjoyed it. Make sure to leave a like if you did, and make sure to subscribe if you're new around here, and I'll see you guys in other videos. Peace out.